Hello, I'm Young Seo Kim, Associate Professor of New Testament at Samuel Tweet Proctor School of Theology in Virginia Union University. I'm going to talk about the Pistis Christu related texts in Galatians and Romans because how to translate these Greek texts are so important to our understanding of Paul's theology. Let me share with you my PowerPoint screen. Translate Pistis Yesu Christu related texts in Galatians and Romans. Here the question is, whose faith does Paul talk about? Whose faith? When the Greek genitive case of Pistis Yesu Christu is used in Paul's letters, we should be extremely careful about who the faith Paul talks about. Technically, the genitive phrase means either believer's faith in Jesus Christ or the faith of Jesus Christ. In Galatians 2.16, the issue is by whose faith one is justified. The Greek genitive phrase pisteos Yesu Christu means technically either faith in Jesus Christ or the faith of Jesus Christ. Faith in Jesus Christ means believer's faith in Jesus, which we call the objective genitive case. That is, Jesus is the object of faith. The alternative translation of this is faith of Jesus Christ, which means Jesus Christ's faith, which we call the subjective genitive. Here we see Jesus is the subject of faith. Faith of Jesus Christ makes better sense for two reasons. First, throughout Galatians and Romans as well, Paul first emphasizes Christ Jesus' work and his faith and then asks believers to participate in Jesus' faithfulness. Otherwise, if Paul had meant believers' faith in Jesus Christ, he could have used the prepositional phrase, something like pisteos and Yesu Christo. Second, in Paul's theology, it makes better sense that justification happens through Jesus Christ's faithfulness, which involves believers' participation in Christ's faithfulness. Now, in Galatians 2.20, Paul talks about his impression with Jesus' love and grace, saying that Christ Jesus is everything to him. So he says, it is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. Then he says he wants to live in peace day, to feel to sevu which is also a Greek genitive phrase. By faith in the Son of God, which means Paul's faith in Jesus, or by the faith of the Son of God, which means Jesus' faith, which is the case. The latter translation, that is by the faith of the Son of God, makes better sense because Christ is everything to Paul. Therefore, he says he wants to live by Jesus' faith. This translation also coheres with Galatians 2.16, 3.22, and elsewhere in Romans, as we'll see moments later. In Galatians 3.22, but the scripture has imprisoned all things under the power of a sin so that what was promised through Pisteos Yesu Christu might be given to those who believe. Again, here we see the Greek genitive case. Promised through who the faith? Faith in Jesus Christ, which is believer's faith in Jesus, or the faith of Jesus Christ, which is Jesus' faith, which is the case. Grammatically and theologically, the subjective genitive meaning makes better sense because for Paul, the first thing is Jesus' faith and then believers' participation follows as we see in this verse 322. 
what was promised through Jesus' faith might be given to those who believe. Interestingly, Romans 3.22 also had a similar structure. God's righteousness coming through Jesus' faith, and it will be effective and available for all who have faith. Now we see here Romans 3.22, Pisteos Yesu Christu. The same question we ask, is this faith in Jesus Christ or the faith of Jesus Christ? The faith of Jesus Christ, the subjective meaning, makes better sense as we saw before. God's righteousness coming through Jesus Christ's faithfulness for all who have faith or for all who believe. Now finally, in Romans 3.26, the question is, God's justification by whose faith? In Romans 3.26, we read that God justifies the one who has pisteos yesu. This is also a Greek genitive case. Is this faith in Jesus or the faith of Jesus? Which is the case? God justifies the one who has faith in Jesus or God justifies the one who has the faith of Jesus. Here also the faith of Jesus makes better sense, as we saw before in Paul's consistent theology of Christ. In all my works, books and articles, even in speeches, in my reflections, I have argued that both Jesus' faithfulness and believers' participation in him are important in Paul's theology. I also have developed a threefold theology or gospel of Paul, which involves three aspects of a participation. God's righteousness. God is the one who is righteous. God is the one who is steadfast. God cares for and love humanity. God, justice and righteousness. So God's participatory love and justice. God's righteousness. But we also need Jesus' faithfulness, Jesus' love and grace and faithfulness. But that's not everything. And we need believers' participation in Jesus Christ. See my most recent book, How to Read Paul. I have here a book, How to Read Paul, a brief introduction to his theology, writings, and world by Fortress Press. It's coming in April 13. 2021. There are also other books and articles of mine. And for more information, visit my blog, http drtimys.blogspot.com. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you or meet you again in another place. Thank you. God bless you. And bye-bye.